couple of months ago, I went down to Southern Florida to do some shooting with my sister and I had brought the 54 cal down and I shot these. These are some 54 caliber rounds that I had made uh, myself. They're actually 53 caliber, right? Um, and they were very difficult to get down the barrel. I mean, very difficult. And there was some discussion as to uh, the correctness of the thickness of the patch, right? And that's still up for debate. And I, and I don't recall exactly what patch was used, though I, I believe in looking at some video footage, I'll be able to determine that, right? However, um, the discussion today is about the, the, the hardness of the lead and making that determination. And what I would like to do is, knowing that some of these were cast from uh, wheel weights, which were not magnesium, I know that, but uh, some of them were also cast from a very large block of lead that I have. I want to determine what the hardness of this is and compare them to some known good uh, store-bought uh, uh, lead that I have, right? I have a couple of different controls that I want to use. Um, first off, I have this one round. I don't know what caliber this is. This is significantly smaller. And this was given to me by uh, my local black powder store. And this is one that they cast. So I'll be able to uh, use that one as a control. Also, this is the Hornady uh, store-bought lead that I use. And this one worked very nicely in the in the 50 caliber in the Hawken. So I'll be uh, using a couple of these to measure as well. And this is, these are those 50 caliber. I won't be using these. These just happen to be on the table. Also, I have these. These are 50 caliber. I have cast these myself um, from a different batch, probably a mixed batch of the same lead that was used to make the 54 caliber. But since, you know, it was a, a different event, I'm going to use some of these as well to test the hardness. And we're going to write them down and see what the hardness is. To do this, I'm going to be using the Lee Hardness uh, testing kit. And this is one that goes in a, a bullet press. Uh, Another test I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using one of the Lee handheld bullet presses to do this and see if that's feasible or if it requires a bench press. I don't know yet. I've been told that the handheld works. We're going to find out. I've already locked the uh, hardness tester into the handheld bullet press as shown here. So I don't know if it's in the ideal position yet. We're going to find out. In order for this to work properly, uh, one side of the bullet's going to need to be flat where the uh, indentation is made. So I'm going to have to take a file to all of the round balls and make a flat surface on them. This is something you definitely want to do outside, away from the house, pets, people, whatever. You can see the uh, flat spot has been made with a file on this one. I'm going to do the others. All the bullets that are going to be tested have flats cut in them. As you can see, I have put them in the separate compartments. This is the uh, commercial uh, Hornady 50 caliber. This is the uh, single test bullet from Buffalo Bills. Uh, this is the homemade uh, 54 caliber and this is the homemade 50 caliber from the two different batches. So we're gonna have to press the bullet in on this flat here at the die and shown in picture four and that's why I cut that flat in to the round ball in such a way that this indicator is gonna sit flush for 30 seconds that's all we're going for. Once we get that done, we can do the measurement later. It's a two-step process. Only concerned about step one right now. If we go over, if we press too hard, it's all for nothing. We have to start all over. It's ruined. I'm going to start with a, a homemade 54 caliber round because I have endless supply of these, obviously, since I could cast them myself. If I have to do this like 50 times to get it right, this is the one to use, not the commercial product. I'm already seeing the value of a bigger flat. Um, you really have to get this thing centered if the flat is too small. I'm going to go with it for this one. If it proves to be a problem, I'm just going to go back and file these more to get a bigger flat on them uh, for a greater profile. But it's not a concern right now. We're still going to go with this. So I'm going to attempt to do this on camera for the first time. We're, we're going to see what happens. And I'm looking at the stopwatch. Eight seconds. So I'm going to hold this to 38.
and there's 38 seconds of release. Let's take a look. And on the bowl, we definitely have an indentation. I'll, I'll, I'll move it here so it's not reflecting. We can see an indentation has been made on the flat. I guess the flat is good enough uh, for that size, as long as you're careful to align it to the center. I feel as though uh, we can move forward and put an indentation now in all of the other ones, so I'm going to do that now. For a commercial one, I went way past on the meter in validating it. I'm going to sand another flat on this one and do it again. All of them now have indentations. The procedure was very carefully followed. If it was off by even a little, I invalidated it and redid it again. That happened on one occasion uh, with this one where I shaved uh, the other edge of it. Uh, interestingly, I'm going to measure both sides of it to see if there was any deviation caused by that. I've put a nick, a small nick, on the invalid side so I can tell which one was the invalid side. Um, now we're going to move over to phase two. We refer back to the instruction manual for that. In step two, we will measure the impression that we created with the provided microscope uh, shown here. Uh, we will take that value and then bring it over to this conversion chart to get the actual lead hardness. And then with that lead hardness, the, uh, the BHN value is what we're looking for. And with that lead hardness, we could then make the correlation to find out uh, what the appropriate hardness is for the um, for the uh, uh, black powder rifle. Now we know uh, ideally what we want to do is come close to the commercial one. I could already tell you by looking at the indentation that my ammunition doesn't come close. My ammunition, the lead is much harder, but we're still going to follow this. This is what it looks like when looking through that special magnifying glass to determine the um, the width of that indentation. This is almost impossible to do on camera, but just to give you an idea, there's the indent and there's the measurement, and you want to get it exactly aligned, which I can't do. It's, I don't have enough hands, but if it was straight and it was perfectly aligned, this one reads 064, by the way, is the measurement when I do it with my eye. Both of these 54 caliber round balls turned out to be 064 as measured on with the microscope. And that uh, turned out to be 12.5 um, on the uh, hardness scale, which I already know is too high. I'd like to look at the other batch of the 50 caliber and see what that is. The 50 caliber rounds from the other batch also measured 0 0.064. They're the same hardness, uh, not surprising. Lead from uh, Buffalo Bills measures full scale of 0.1. That's a, a full deflection of the meter. I don't, it doesn't have a, uh, um, a conversion for, for hardness that goes to 0.1. It only goes up to uh, 0.079 in the book. I'm gonna have to research what the hardness is but I'm gonna assume that that's pure lead. I correct myself, these are the um, commercial bullets. These ones go off the scale. If, if there was a .12 on the scale, uh, these bullets would show .12, and there is no reading for .12 on this scale. Uh, I imagine that's obviously even softer. Well, it is obviously even softer than than uh, uh, the, the one I got from the store. At that point already, it's, it's ridiculous already, but you could see it goes all the way to 0 0.1, and the commercial bullet would have gone to 0 0.12. Uh, another difference between uh, 0 0.08 and 0 0.10, that magnitude uh, even further. That said, this bullet from Buffalo Bills is, is already off the chart. I mean, it, the 0 0.079 on the chart is an eight on the hardness scale. Um, I, I imagine that this is uh, entirely soft enough to be used in, in a black powder rifle, this mixture. In, I don't even know. I'm going to have to find out what the conversions are for these two values. While I find this device is consistent, I don't know if it's entirely accurate, and I'll explain why. Looking here in the documentation provided by Lee, we find that the Brunel value of 5 is the softness for pure lead. And I've managed to come across uh, some documentation which has been provided on the internet, which shows some of the missing values that people who work with black powder 
might want to have available to them. And these numbers extend uh, beyond the values that they provide in their book. And this goes all the way up to uh, 0.107, which is beyond the values that I would use. But basically what it states is 0.098, which is just about full deflection on the scale, is 5.0. So if we look at a scale reading, we could see that if the indentation goes from 0 to 0 0.1, it's pretty much pure lead as far as softness. If we look at my final values, we'll see that the homemade came in at about 0 0.064. We look again at the control that was provided to me by the shop, and that one came in at full deflection at 0.1. The commercial ones that I had purchased and used for this test came in after uh, the full deflection, so I had to do a guesstimate. And when I rechecked it again, it showed that it came in around 0.11. In looking at all three of these values together, if I cross-reference it on the chart, I find that looking at the commercial value, the hardness is 3.9, which is uh, softer than pure lead, which is uh, a hardness of 5. So clearly it's off. Uh, the control came in at 4.7, which is slightly softer than pure lead and the homemade bullets that I have is 12.5. So while this isn't accurate, what it is displaying is that compared to the control and commercial bullets that I've tested, my homemade lead is simply too hard to be used in my muzzle loaders. It has too much tin or antimony in it uh, to be effective. So I'm gonna have to trade it out for softer lead and there's no doubt about that, and that's what this test reveals, and for this reason, it is a valuable test, and the tester is good once you have established a control, a good control for with lead that you can trust. So that concludes this test. Thanks for watching.